This video will introduce basic query syntax. The main thing we're going to do with SQL is construct queries. These lectures won't give an exhaustive summary of every possible SQL command. You can look online for that. Instead, we're just going to go through some of the more useful ones and look at joining them together in order to answer interesting questions. The basic syntax of a SQL command is to select some columns from a table where some condition is satisfied, group the results, apply some condition on the groups, and then potentially sort the results on the basis of the values in one of the columns. The simplest SQL query is to return every row in the database. This command can still be very useful. For example, if you hate SQL and you just want all the data out of the database so you can deal with it using something else. I've definitely done this in the past. The statement select star from table will return every row in the table. To execute this statement, or any statement in Python, we have to deal with the complications we mentioned earlier. However, once you've done this once, it's fairly simple to execute any SQL query you want. We begin by importing the SQLite 3 library, which lets us execute SQL commands in Python. We then connect to the database using the connect function. The database is just a regular file on our computer. Other SQL implementations, like MySQL, are not quite this simple. So this is one of the nice features of SQLite. We then start a cursor associated with the database, which is assigned to the variable C, and that is what we use to execute statements. To actually execute the query, we use c.execute and pass the string select star from customers to it. We then call the cursor's fetch all function and capture the output in the variable rows. After fetch all returns, rows is a list of tuples, each tuple corresponding to a row of the table. Note that in Python, tuples are an immutable data type. Fetch all returns tuples so that you don't accidentally modify the data and think there's something in the database that isn't really there. Basically, you should try to write read-only code to operate on the result of database queries. For really big tables, you might not want to dump the whole thing into a variable. In that case, the cursor can be used as an iterator, so you can use it in a for loop like so. We already saw the simple query to return everything. To return only a specific column, we can use the column name instead of the star. For example, to return all the countries mentioned in the customers table, we would use select country from customers. From now on in these videos, we'll just write SQL commands, assuming that you followed the previous example to run them in Python. Often, a query will return multiples of the same value. For example, when we have multiple customers from the same country. In that case, we can return only the unique values with select distinct. We write select distinct country from customers, and in that case, we would get a list of all countries from the customers table with no duplicates. Note that we, have also, we could have also removed duplicates with Python's set function. In general, it will be possible to apply a filter or organize the data using either SQL or Python. As we're discussing SQL, we'll learn how to do things that way. However, one of the advantages of using Python is that we can operate on the results of a query using Python functions. So, aside from in these videos, I encourage you to use whatever method is faster or easier to understand.